Last in position. Oh, away go the tapes, and indeed we get underway with the second of the left-hand cycle races this afternoon. Well, we're watching Luke Packle because he indeed has moved from the inside of the start line right across the rest of the field and got himself to the front. So, uh, very determined riding tactics from Luke Patchell there, but indeed he was successful. He's got himself into that first corner in front. And the nice lay back. Now, the brilliant bit of riding from that start line, you see that Luke has actually pulled off into the middle. Right. Well, I was looking for number 174, who made a good start as well, but indeed it does look as if it... If it is indeed John Arnott and Russell Steele that have got to the front. So John Arnott working hard and really gaining quite a lead over the rest of the field as they go down that right straight. The gaps have really started to open up already for John Arnott. So John, I'm sure, will be pleased with this one as he gets away from the rest of the field. Drives hard coming out of that pit bend. Gets his hand the incredibly close to the voids. Oh, we look to see whether he can be caught. It's Duncan Fish that's uh, in second place at the moment. Duncan with all the work to do to find the place. He was comfortably holding third place, but now has got a fight on his hands. So as we go into the last lap then, John Arnott starts his afternoon's racing by leading his first ride. Duncan Fish and uh, Colin Holland still there in second place, but City Pencil and Curly Bell seem to have got themselves going again. And he puts himself equal with Phil Penfold. A win for John Arnott. Second place going to number 174, Duncan Fish and Colin Holland. And Billy Penfold crosses the line in third place. Still with event five, it's the first leg of the left-hand side cars. A win for number 251, and that, of course, is John Arnott and Russell Still. In second place, number 174, Duncan Fish and Clive Holland. Third place, number 23, Billy Penfold and Carly Bell. And fourth place, number 21, followed home in fifth by number 68. The winning time, 214.45, 214.45, 251, 174, 23, 21, 68, and no other finishes. So it's over the page we go, and we're into the 350, already on the start line for race five, first leg of event two, the 350 competition. When I arrived here this morning and first saw the programme, I thought what an interesting 350 class this is. I saw some brilliant 350 racing over in Winchester in Hampshire last Sunday. And indeed, there is an excellent lineup of riders here in this 350 class. Well, Martin Jacobs is the tall rider in the red leathers and moved through now in the first place going in. races go on this afternoon. Marty Jacobs leading but under pressure as they come around that pit bend for the first time. Well, it's still Jacobs that holds it but only just from David Steen in second place. Great to see Dave out on a 350 machine. Of course a very confident grass track and speedway competitor than David Steen. Those four lines 
drive hard round that pit bend, looking to come underneath on the exit of the bend. He goes through on the inside, but Martin Jacobs still looking comfortable at the moment. Wayne Broadhurst is the other rider up there amongst that trio of riders, but it really is side-by-side -side stuff for David Steen on the outside of Martin Jacobs. Wayne Broadhurst still not losing contention with those Both those two as it comes towards the line. But one more lap to go, as indeed Martin Jacobs for so long has held the lead. It would be such a shame for him to lose the lead on this last lap. Wayne Border certainly has looked better as the race has gone on, but Martin Jacobs looks to have done enough. It's most of the line that Jacobs holds Wayne Border in second, David Steen finishing in third place. Dave Homer leading that group of riders home for fourth place, but a tremendous start to the 350 competition for equally Wayne Broadhurst and Martin Jacobs. Then event two, the 350cc competition, and a win for number 14, Martin Jacobs. In second place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Third place, number 41, and indeed is David Steen. And fourth place, there, number 139. Fifth place, number 75. Sixth place, 261. Seventh place, 45. Eighth place, 96. Ninth place, 36. 10th place, 58. 11th place, 17. No 12th finisher. We've got a speed for this one of 47.2 miles per hour. And the winning time, 149.14. 14, 158, 41, 139, 75, 261, 45, 96, 36, 58, and 17. 47.24, 149.14. So we move on to race six. We're still with the 350 competition, obviously event two. And it's Mark Harris has made a tremendous start this time. So Keith Potts goes after him. I know there's a lot of people in this centre would expect Keith Potts to win every 350 race he goes into. Keith Potts already gets himself up to the front. Mark Seabright is the rider that's gone after him, the very tall figure of Seabright in second place. It's Mark Harris that's holding third at the moment. But as we watch to see Keith Potts go very, very wide, Mark Harris and Mark Seabright locked together in second place, go after him going into that top bend. But there's already a bit of a gap opened up by Keith Potts. He's indeed agreed with me and said it's going to be a good competition. But for the moment, We've got a red flag. You can see in the interest of safety, we've got a number of riders down on this pit bend. So they're deciding to put the uh, red flag up in the interest of safety. So Keith Potts has got all that hard work to do again. Mark Seabright has now had a little bit more practice on the circuit. Will that make a difference to him? the restart of the second of the 350 races already you can see there's problems on that start line all sorts of riders in all sorts of problems oh well, indeed they have decided to put a red flag up well again it looks as if we've got the riders for race six ready and away this time we've got the uh, Start tapes away and Mark C. Wright it is that comes to the front so we look for Keith Potts, it was Keith Potts that did all the work on the first bend but Mark C. Wright has got a much much better start this time. Mark C. Wright then away from Keith Potts in second place, anxiously looking for Mark Harris and other riders that were performing in that first race before it was stopped but Keith Potts has gone wide this time, he struggles to keep himself off the boards. Well, Mitchell Gordon's up there as well with Alan Harmer. It's Mitchell Gordon, number nine, on the inside of Alan Harmer as they go into that drop there. Right, that's a mistake from Keith Potts. He might get away. Well, 
well it's the fact that he's been given this opportunity to keep in front of Keith Potts. He knows the strength of Keith Potts as indeed most of us do who travel down this way quite often. And Mitchell Gordon riding well in third place but Alan Armour determined to get in front of him again. Cuts across his racing line. Mitchell underneath once again. So Mitchell Gordon still holding third place. Mark Harris is there. It changes all the time. We won't take our eyes off Keith Potts though as he goes wide again and gets close to the boards. Or looking around at Harbour at Mark Harris and you can see that Mitchell Gordon has got right at number. Getting in on the action for that third place. So very fast hand on the third and really has to he has just one more bend to negotiate. He comes the end, but... the early leader before the race would stop, finishes in second place. As Alan Harmer takes third place, Mark Harris finishes in fourth, Mark Giles in fifth, and Mitchell Gordon picks up sixth place. The event two, 350 first leg, and a win, a very comfortable win in the end for number 167, Mark Seabright. In second place, number 175, Keith Potts. Third place, number 121, Alan Harmer. Fourth place, number 260, Mark Harris. Fifth place, number 26. Sixth place, number 9. Seventh place, 71. Eighth place, 77. Ninth place, 3.32. Tenth place, 69. The winning time, 143.79. That equates to an average 49.42 miles an hour. 143.79 the time, 167, 175, 121, 260, 26, 9, 71, 77, 3.32 and 69. Well, away we go with a change of class once again. We go over to the 500cc sidecars. It's event four in your program. It's race seven. And an early leader off that start line is the very comparable pair of Mel and the Most of the time that I've seen these boys race, they're very, very good in terms of representing us across the European circuits. A very comfortable pair indeed, and indeed look very confident because behind them we've got a national champion. That indeed is number seven, Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse. On the circuit, so the class of course is signing in the interest of safety that he's got to pull the riders to a halt. A red flag being shown. So in the interest of safety, all these outfits uh, being pulled up. But the 500cc tight cars for the first time and look at the crew that made it once again. It is Mel and Lester Goodwin. They get away from the start, a flying start for them. Kevin Laird goes into second place, but he's got a lot of work to do. And I'm sure he's Passenger Alan Pithouse then holding second place, but Mammal Lester Goodwin leading as they go around that pit bend for the first time. That looks to be very, very quick, that bend. Oh, it's Alan the Limpack in third place in outfit number 20 that's putting the pressure on Kevin Laird. Norman Hayes on out of contention as well, back in fourth place, but watch for Alan the Limpack. Who is riders on these 500cc outfits? But Mel and Lester Goodwin looking tremendous for them there as they get away from the rest of the field. There's some very confident crews behind them. This really is uh, piling the pressure on. Oh, Norman Hayes not giving up at all. He's in the back of the field. Those three are close together in the has Kevin Lane making a special match on them. The two outfits together as they go down that back straight. It means that Kevin Laird will be forced to drive wide on this pit bend. Alan and Limpeck will be able to hold a much tighter line. They should get the advantage coming out of the inside of the bend, leaving that pit box. Well, again, it's close, but advantage still with Kevin Laird, or is it? As they, again, don't have the chance to get across on the inside line. They know that Alan Peck is allowed to go through on the inside. 
Jones would go into that pit bend for the last time. No question about who the leaders are. Mal and Lester Goodwin come to the line with a comfortable lead, but a great scrap going on for that second and third place. Alan Limpeck indeed gets second. It looks like Norman Haynes has stolen third place. Just there from Kevin Laird. Seven then, the 500cc sidecars uh, event four. A win for outfit number 30 and a very convincing one indeed for Mal and Lester Goodwin. In second place, number 20, that is Alan and Lynn Peck. In third place, number 21, Norman Haynes and passenger Neil Pocknell. And in fourth place, number 7, Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse. The winning time, 148.17, 47.66. 30, 20, 21 and 7. The winning time, 148.17. Well, we've obviously got well and truly into the grass track season now. If you're not sure where to go each Sunday, there is one quick way that that can be solved. I'm not going to be rude to this man at all, but he's very easy to recognise. He gives me trouble every time he goes past me. I'm talking about the man who's selling grass to diaries. Yes, he's just reminding me that I haven't advertised for him. So if you see that uh, very large uh, gentleman walking around selling diaries, they're the grass uh, diaries that tell you exactly what's going on in the world of grass track every week. And as we get underway with the second of the first leg of the 500cc sidecars, looking for Brian Palmer and indeed Brian Palmer and Scott Dunn with a little bit of a lead I was going to say but everybody closes up on him as he goes into this pit bend. Well we watch to see what happens in second place as he gets very close out of that pit bend. Oh Brian Palmer still holding the lead but only just from in second place, Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. Tony Cook and Craig Herbert. He's made up ground on Brian Palmer. He sees very, very quick into the bend, Tony Cook. Goes for a gap that Brian Palmer has left on the inside. And indeed, you can see that got very, very close on that bit bend. Oh, number 91, who was also in on that battle with Wayne Boys and Simon King third place but the clerk of the course deciding that uh, that outfit is still on the track well it looks as if all the problems have been sorted out and we're underway once again with the race eight remember what happened before it was stopping there's problems for tony cook by the look of it so i was going to say to you it was tony cook that looked to have got the advantage and got through in front of brian palmer well unfortunately brian not able to come out for the rebound and looks into the problem Wayne Boys, Wayne Boys gets away from the rest of the field, that's outfit number 91, Wayne Boys and Simon King indeed go into that pit bend for the first time with some four or five bike lengths on the rest of the field. Trying to close that gap is Simon Baird and uh, I believe it is indeed Rose Sanford, I'm not sure at all, I know Wayne Boys sure wasn't expecting to get such an easy run as this as he gets away from the rest of the field. Oh, Simon Baird still there in second place and hadn't realised it was Pete Baird in third place so those two trying to have the road to back on the Simon looks to have got the rest of it now. As we watch Wayne Boys come round off that pit bend. It's the last lap that he goes into this time. So a nice comfortable result in the end. What looked to be a very, very hard race when they first came to the line. It proved to be exactly that with Brian Palmer and Tony Cook setting the pace. Now, of course, the race in its rerun. No oh, Brian Palmer and Wayne Boys getting an easy run to the chequered flag as they come round off that pit bend this time. He's going to take maximum points on his first ride. Very pleased with that, I'm sure. Wayne Boys puts his hand in the air. There's indeed, this battle between Keith Baird and Simon Baird. Won by number 14, Simon Baird. He takes second place. And third place going to Keith Baird. He 
event four is the 500cc sidecars and after getting into a rerun, a win for number 91. That of course is Wayne Boys and Simon King. In second place, number 14, Simon Baird and O Sanford. And in third place, number 13, Keith Baird and Brian Groves. The winning time, 148.15, 47.66, an equal speed to race seven. 91, 14 and 13, those finishing numbers. The time, 148.15. So two very, very close times there for both the 500cc sidecar events. We move on to race nine. It's the first of the 500cc solos this time. And if you look down through that uh, list of competitors, you'll know that we've got a very strong field in the 500cc. Oh, here we go then with the first of the 500cc solo event, looking perhaps for Trevor Banks this time, he leads as he goes past us. is riding 215 we'll look and see if we can pick it up as we come round but Trevor Banks in tremendous form Paul Mitchell has got up in the second looks as if it's Jason Jennett that's riding bike 215 of course the program is 165 but those others Trevor Banks leading as they come round past us and comfortably at the moment from Paul Mitchell in second place. It's Vince Kinchin that's putting the pressure on Paul Mitchell. Ricky Sanford now getting on the action for his getting under pressure as they go into that top corner. We saw Trevor have a brilliant ride last Monday up at the Barks Club. Take it up to the North Barks Club. He really was in tremendous form there. Then he came right in the final. He looks over his shoulder now. I'm sure he didn't expect to be as For race nine then, the first of the 500cc solo is you went three in your programme. A win for number four, Trevor Banks. In second place, number 29, that's Paul Mitchell. Third place, number eight, Vince Kinchin. Fourth place, number 04, Ricky Sanford. Fifth place, number three. Sixth place, 165. Seventh place, 174. Eighth place, 22. Ninth place, 19. 16, 11th place 2 and 12th place 201. 139.20. Of course, there is a change in this one for Neville Penfold riding as Neville Tatum, I should say, riding as 23. Paul Mitchell is your early leader though from Mark C riding second. Well, I can see Robbie Fuller up there in that group of riders. Mark Seamite comes through in second place. Neville Tatum it is indeed who's up there in third spot. Looking to see how they get sorted. Robbie Fuller in all sorts of problems on that top there. Couple places there. But if you watch to the front, oh, it's Paul Hurry that looks in great form this afternoon. Mark Seamite up there in second place. Neville Tatum holding third. Please, I'm sure to be out there. Him and Alan Harmer. And Duncan Tolhurst coming across the line leading this group of riders for fourth place.
very convincing win for number 86, Paul Hurry. In second place, number 167, Mark Seawright. Third place, number 23, that of course is the change, it's Neville Tatum, number 23. Fourth place, number 74, Duncan Tolhurst. Fifth place, number 121, Alan Armour. Sixth place, number 169. Seventh place, number 154. Eighth place, number 26. Ninth place, 45. Tenth place, 24. Eleventh place, 145. The speed was 53.99. The time, 135.85. So a very quick time indeed, 135.85. Those numbers, 86, 167, 23, 74, 121, 169, 154, 26, 45, and 24, and 145. If you missed any of the results from race 9, I'll quickly run through those by number only. Number 4, 29, 8, 04, 3, 165, 174, 22, 19, 16, 2, and 2.01. Hope you missed any of those results in race 9. That brought you right up to date. I know there are some of you that keep your programs 100%. So we'll attempt to keep you up to date with all the information. We move over to race 11. It's the first of the 1,000cc right-hand sidecars. We're still with leg 1. It's event 6 now. And we've got 4,000cc sidecar races to get through before we indeed have finished the first legs of all the competitions. Tremendous lineup of sidecars here this afternoon in the 1000cc class. A lot of riders here for the first time. One of those indeed is number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Our British Masters champions, of course, as they go round that first bend. Leading, I had a quick word with them after practice. They said it looked good. They'd asked me last week what I thought of it because I was down here last year, but they've never been here before. I think it looks superb. They now have ridden it. It'll be interesting to see what they make of it as the day goes on. Oh, indeed, they get away from the rest of the field as they go down that back straight. They really do look as if they can ride this type of circuit. Oh, Mick Cave it is, is finding his way through in the second place, just in fact in front of uh, Kevin Simmons. So Mick Cave and Mick Stace up in the second, Kevin Simmons leading them for a little while before uh, that was changed. Kevin Simmons going well. Passenger Mark Langmaid. But there's problems for Ken Lane on that top corner as he indeed has spun the outfit round. He waits for the rest of the outfits to go. It doesn't look as if he's stalled the motor. It looks as if he can indeed get going again. So Richard Jenner indeed has got through. We wonder how many more outfits can get through in front of Ken Lane. But that's it. We've got three outfits in front of him. Now Ken Lane has got a lot of ground to make up. So problems indeed on that top corner for Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. It means that Mick Cave and Mick Stace have taken over the lead. As indeed it's the jacket flag this time as they come round, so it's going to be a win for Mick Cave. Second place is Kevin Simmons and Mark Langmaid. And third place to number 87, Richard Jenner and Nick Walters. And a disappointing first ride from Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, doing everything right until that third lap. Indeed, they settled for a fourth spot. And, and already the 1,000cc sidecar event uh, being full of mishaps straight away. A win for number five. That, of course, is Mick Cave and Mick Stace. In second place, number 32, Kevin Simmons and Mark Langmaid. In third place, number 87, Richard Jenner and Nick Walters. Fourth place, number seven, the early leaders, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Fifth place, number 101. That, of course, is... Uh, Gavin Newlin and Martin Smallcross. And sixth place, number 123, that's our reserves that came in place of Shane Baker, and that is number 123, Dave Penfold and Justin Peach. The winning time, 135.17, 48.88 miles an hour were given as an average. Somebody obviously has done a lot of work here to try and work all these speeds out. Looks to be interesting. So, race 12, we move on to, we're still with the right-hand side cars, a change in this one, no John Hunt, but taking his place, our first reserve, 112, Rick and Nicola Colvin, so they came in to grid one, that's the positions you can see in the brackets at the end of the name, that's what position they've got on the start line, interesting names going in this one again, Ivan Matthews, I haven't seen in action this year, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes on a circuit like this. His regular passenger still not recovered from injury, but a very confident passenger indeed has got in Peter Jones. Peter Jones rides for Ivor Matthews, and there's problems for Peter Adams on this one as he spins round on that first corner. Roger Mesa gets into second place. 
and uh, Mike Baxter going well at the moment Mike Baxter had some good rides last weekend I know that he's been out two or three times in this area as well but we were looking to see Peter Adams for the first time here of course he's travelled all the way over from New Zealand and you can see he's spun round exactly as Ken Lane did in that first race <laughs> look at the back of the field because you'll see just how quick Peter Adams is but Good pressure this at the front of the field though from Mike Baxter as you can see Ivan Matthews has now come under pressure and we look to see maybe a change as he comes out of that first bend, a good ride this and there's problems for Ivan Matthews. Oh, Mick Baxter is going through on the inside and I can see that we've got a red flag on that top corner because of course with a boarded circuit like this if the outfit's still out on the track that's exactly where the outfit's going to be coming out of that bend at two. Good to see that uh, Mick Baxter is going so well. I'm told he had a tumble at Sierra some two weeks ago. And Roger Misa there not really being able to make up the ground. He, of course, is back after injury from last year as well. And it's great to see he's looking uh, fit and well. And, of course, it does mean that we do have another rerun. So Peter Adams, I'm sure, will be one of those that will be grateful for that race being stopped. He, of course, spun round on that first bend. We might see that New Zealand outfit in action once again. He spun round on that first corner. None of us, of course, have seen Peter Adams in action. I did get a chance to speak to him this morning. He's a New Zealand champion. He's ridden mainly on the speedway circuits in New Zealand and Australia. But he came across here last year to watch a lot of the sidecar speedway that went on last year. He said that he felt determined enough to bring his outfit and passenger over with him this year. That indeed is what he's done. This is his first outing this year on the British Class Track circuits. So we watch to see what he can do. He gets a much, much better start this time. But Mick Baxter again has got to the front. Well, it is Mick Baxter with Peter Adams in second place. Drives in hard. Mick Baxter goes wide and Peter Adams tries to stay inside him. Holds that outfit tight on the inside of the circuit. And it is Adams that gets away. Oh, that outfit certainly looks very, very quick in a straight line as we watch Mike Baxter go around the outside once again. Roger Misa is right up there with them in third place at the moment, but it is a question of whether Mike Baxter can catch the flying New Zealander Peter Adams at the moment. Oh, almost together as they go into that bottom bend, and Adams again has put it sideways with all sorts of problems on that bottom bend. Roger Misa sees the advance and tries to go around the outside of him, but it does mean that Mike Baxter has been able to get in front of him. So Mike Baxter now takes up the lead from Peter Adams in second place. Roger Misa still there in third, and Adams again is sideways. Roger Misa notices that and goes through on the inside of him. So Peter Adams struggling to get used to this kind of circuit. Of course, he's not used to tight corners and long straight. The speedway circuit's much, much tighter than this. But Mike Baxter, really in good form at the moment. Mike Baxter and Steve Bassett still recovering from a tumble they had down the Maystone Aces some three weeks ago now, but looked to be in very good form. They had a good ride up at North Parks on Monday last week, and Roger Meester, great to see him back in form again. And he goes round that top bend chasing Mike Baxter. Peter Adams still not in contention with Roger Meester, fighting with that outfit every inch of the way. He really does look to be struggling on the bends here at the moment. Well, need a good win there, first time out for Mac Baxter. Roger Misa picking up second place, and it is only going to be a third place for Peter Adams. 12, and after the rerun, we get a win for number 88. A good win for that crew, Mike Baxter and passenger Steve Bassett. In second place, number 51, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Third place is number six, Peter Adams and John Gray. In fourth place, number 112, that's Rick and Nicola Colvin. In fifth place, number 773, that's Glenn Richmond and Steve North. The winning time, 133.68, that equates to a 54.46 speed. That'll be interesting to watch because the time was quicker than that first time from McCave. And I'm told that that's not the speed. 49 point... <laughs> I'm looking at it so loud, sorry. 
Uh, 49.39, apologise for that, I thought that seemed incredibly fast, 49.39, 133.68 the time as we move on to race 13, we're still with event 6 of course, the 1000cc sidecars, and the chance to see in action for the first time, Robbie Wilson, Tim Bennett, John Mitten, a change, no Dave Heath, so we've got in his place number 25, Rob Wilson Jr., and as we look to the far side, they're indeed underway, looking for that very distinctive helmet of Tim Bennett, he's a very good start. This time he's gone in in more faith. John Mitten's gone up in the second by the look of it, but as they come towards me, it is Robbie Wilson that's got away. Steve Heath coming through the middle of those three outfits. Thought had made it up into second place, but it is still John Mitten that holds second place. But Steve Heath again going for the gap on the inside that John Mitten has lost. Tim Bennett looking for that gap as well, goes through into third place. But Rob Wilson being allowed to get away at the moment. Remember a change of passenger for Rob Wilson this afternoon. Vince Jones away on holiday, so Andy Orchard is the passenger for Rob Wilson. Steve Heath now coming through into second place. He and Steve Wright seem to have got the better of John Mitten now to get into that second. And Tim Bennett moved up into third spot. Tim Bennett and Pete Bassett fighting in third at the moment. Quick hand I can put out here for Pete Bassett. He uh, has got a rolling chassis, wants to have a go at racing sidecars himself. He just desperately needs an engine. So if anybody could contact Pete, he's of course with Tim Bennett this afternoon, outfit number 12. So if you've uh, perhaps got an engine spare somewhere, he's got all the rolling chassis and everything, just needs an engine to go in it. Let's stay with the race we've got in hand at the moment. It's race 13 in your programme. It's event 6 with 1,000cc sidecars and a convincing ride from Ron Wilson and Andy Orchard. They take the chequered flag. Coming home in second place, winning this good battle for second place is Steve Heath and passenger Steve Wright. Tim Bennett and Pete Bassett finishing in third. Well, interesting, if I look back at the only other time I've been to this circuit before, it was the Manneken meeting last year, and it was Rob Wilson that won the 1,000cc sidecars that afternoon. It equates to a speed of 48.5 miles an hour. 48.5 the speed, 136.19 the time. If you missed any of those, they were 24, 191, 12, 28, 25, and 45. Of the first leg of the side cars is race 14. As we look to see John Halsey make a brilliant start going into that first corner. Oh, looking perhaps for the uh, crew of Neville Penfold. He's up in second at the moment, but it's John Halsey that's got away. John Halsey and Tony Miles then lead as they go past us. Neville Penfold and Paul Randall in second. Oh, that indeed is the two that we've got our eyes on at the moment. Looks as if there's problems for outfit number 77, Wayne Beecham. But as we look to the front, John Halsey looks to be in very good form at the moment. He also had a good ride up at North Parks on uh, Bank Holiday Monday last weekend. Neville desperately trying to catch him. Jerry Adams is up there in third place at the moment. they started to get spread out a little bit. John Halsey, a very comfortable starting position, and he got himself quite a good lead and has now decided to hang on to it. He doesn't look like being caught a call. No, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall trying to close the gap, but indeed not having any answer at the moment to John Halsey. Well, Jerry Adams, uh, you might remember, has had some very quick rise towards the back end of last season. He looks to be in good form for this year, but no answer to these very quick two pairs that are out in front of him at the moment. Well, we start to see the checkered flag being made ready, as it is indeed John Halsey from start to finish. A good ride from John Halsey and Tony Miles. Neville Penfold and Paul Randall finish in second. Jerry Adams and Adam Kelper smith finish in third place. But a good result to start the day off for John Halsey to win for number 13 John Halsey and Tony Miles in second place number two Neville Penfold and Paul Randall third place number 55 Jerry Adams and Adam Cowper Smith in fourth place number three Colin Hutton fifth place number eight sixth place number 77 and the winning time 135.30 a speed of 48.88 
135.3 the time. We move on to the second leg event. We're back to the 250s in race 15. And I know that I've got them here somewhere. The leaders at the moment are number 75 and 76. So we quickly look down and see that both of them are out in this particular race. John Dilmer. So where are they in that, this particular race? Let's look and see as they come round past me for the second time. I can see that John Dormer is back in third place, but leading is Lee Street. And indeed, this could turn out to be quite a scrap. Both of them on 10 points at the moment. Both of them having won their first rise. Well, John Dormer back in third up a little bit and allows John Dorman to come through but now it's Lee Street that John Dorman has got to go after. Lee Street of course had a win first time out, John Dorman did equally and he's now fighting after him in second place. Phil Ranson is the rider up in fourth, of course Matthew Street still there in third place. Lee Street and John Dorman. Lee Street getting closer all the time. Comes very, very wide. One more left to go. Oh, John Pilcher had a good ride first time out. He's up in fourth place now. He's one more. Had a win first time out, looking to maintain a maximum as he comes to the line, just wants that end to pass on that fifth end. John Dormer getting closer and closer as he comes to the line, but it is going to be Lee Street. John Dormer takes second, Matthew Street takes third, John Pilcher takes fourth, and Phil Ranson crossing the line in fifth place. So that makes the 250 competition very interesting indeed. We had two riders only on a maximum 75 and 76. We now have only Lee Street on maximum points. Second leg event we're with the 250s in race 15. It was a win for number 75. That, of course, is Lee Street. In second place, number 76, John Dormer. Third place, 741, uh, Matthew Street. Fourth place, number 49, John Pilcher. Fifth place, number 6. Sixth place, number 36. Seventh, 18. Eighth, 111. Ninth, 30. Ten, number five, and eleven, fifty-four. The winning time, one forty-five point eight three, forty-eight point five two average miles per hour. We're already over the page and underway with the second leg. Still with the two fifties. Knockdown Walker leading. What's to see? That's not a rider I recognise straight away. Who's leading? But it is indeed number 32, who is Andy Squirrel. Well, Andy was got a second first time out. He was sitting on eight points from his first ride with second place. So he knows that he's going to second So a good ride from number 32 in your program. That, of course, is Andy Squirrel. And... Uh, Darren Bishop up in the second place, number 89. He, of course, was also on the second place for his first ride, so on eight points, he Very, very quick in that third place race, right down on machinery. Well, my apologies, that of course is Terry Giles, number 300, he's moving through. Those who look like catching our front runner, Andy Squirrel. He goes very, very wide. That's the checkered flag, Andy Squirrel takes it. A good ride from Terry Giles to get him up into second place. Third place was indeed uh, a rider who finished second first time out. That was Darren Bishop. So the 250 competition getting very, very close indeed. It promises to be a good final at the end of the day. Seven, 12th place, 181, 48.52 the speed and 146.44 the time. Well, my apologise if uh, that seemed a little bit quick there, but obviously we're into the... 
left hand side guard for the second time. Bill Penfold and who have we got leading at the moment? Yes indeed, leading the field at the moment is number two and of course is Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw but Lenny Bora hoping to have a much better ride this time his first ride He didn't score very well first time out, but he looks to be much more comfortable this time going after Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw. One crew that did score well are our third place riders, Tom Penfold and Jason Tenney. And I've been advised that I said earlier on that I didn't think Jason had ridden very much on the left hand side. That's the point that I haven't seen him. Uh, say thank you for that information that's been passed on to me with Phil Penfold and Nigel Shaw in convincing form this afternoon drives hard around that top end Lenny Moore is still fighting in second place but he knows where Phil Penfold's going what a lap to go for Phil Penfold and Nigel Shaw and a fuck up there second winner now Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw. Lenny Bora gets in the second place and scores much better this time. Tom Penfold and Jason Glenny finishing third, doing no their point tally, no problems at all. And John Arnott and Russell Steele finishing in fourth. Fifth place number 151, sixth place 174, 46.43 the speed, 150.46 the time. So 150.46, 46.43 the speed. But if you don't want to keep up with all the results... And passing on, as always, reliable information to me. Well, the early leader in race 18 is 808. Luke Patchell, and of course Luke had uh, to pull out of his first ride, so he'll be determined to get much better points this time. Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis up in second place. But really getting away from the eight, Luke Patchell, Julian Browning. Uh, it really does look as if this left-hand side car competition is going to be wide open till the end of the day. Because Luke never scored in his first ride. He looks like getting maximum this time. Bill Penfold, of course, leading the competition with two wins. Fight number 68, Chris Berwick and Kevin Two points in their first ride, as indeed did Lenny Bora. So, uh, this competition is very interesting indeed as the afternoon racing goes on. But let's stay with this particular race as we go into the last lap because Luke Batchel and Julian Browning really making the best of it this time and showing exactly what they're capable of. A good scrap this going on for second place though. Chris Berwick hanging on to it at the moment. But under a lot of pressure. I think that's going to be a fight all the way to the line as we see the second place being quickly add up my points here individually which is going to be the most interesting competition to be on. It really is a strong field in this class. Luke Patchell and Julian Brown, though they did exactly what was required of them. Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis finishing second. Phil and Richard Davis finishing third place. Of the left-hand sidecar competition, a win for 808, Luke Patchell and Julian Browning. In second place, number 68, that's Chris Berwick and Kevin Jarvis. Third place, number 217, Phil and Richard Davis. And fourth place, number 21, that of course was our reserve that came in, Keith Lesseter and Jason Cramp. No other finishes, the winning time 151.70 and the speed 46.03. 808, 68, 217, 21, the winning time 151.70. Well, we move into the 350s already. We've got the 350 riders on the line. And that didn't look to be a very clean start at all. But you need a 
red flag being raised. That really did look to be a very, very ragged start. The red flag has indeed gone up to uh, let the riders know that it's a poor start. So, chance for me to have a quick look at what's happened to the 350 competition so far. Winners in the first leg were number 14 and 167. That, of course, is Marty Jacobs and Mark Seabright. And if you look at race 19 and 20, they don't, in fact, meet each other. So we could possibly, in this competition, have two riders going through on a maximum from two rides. Mark Seabright goes in the first one, and if I look down the other scorers, number 175, Keith Potts, I know he's got a lot of local support. He, indeed, is on eight points at the moment with that second place first time out. He goes in this one as well. Nick Irwin with not a very good result at all in his first ride, be looking to make up some points this time. Alan Harmer, he had third first time out, so uh, by no means out of a qualifying position. Indeed, quite a strong position getting third first time out. We'll be looking to go well this time though. So, a slow start, a ragged start for the first of the second leg of the 350s. Quickly looking across this line, Alan Harmer is right on the outside, Mark Seabright right on the inside. Keith Potts very much in the middle of the gate. He indeed has taken those very distinctive pink overalls off, so you'll be back to the regular leathers of Keith Potts this time. As we get underway, and it is Mark Seabright that's made the best of the start from the inside. Alan Harmer is gone, but Keith Potts is up there as well. Steve Carter is the other rider in amongst that group of riders, number 75. Got a rider down on the track on this side, so the red flag once again being raised as uh, the rider is slow coming around this corner. And Mark Seabright, I'm sure, will be disappointed with that. Steve Carter, he, you might have noticed that there's two 71s in race 19, that's Arthur Livings. He was in grid 8 and grid 9. The rider that was missed was number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. So we're underway then with the start of race 19, and away we go with Steve Carter making an equally good start. It's not Mark Seabright has made it this time. Wayne Broadhurst is up there though with Steve Carter. Keith Potts is on the outside of Mark Seabright. in third and fourth as it is still Steve Carter that leads from Wayne Broadhurst. A tremendous racing prospect this one as Wayne Broadhurst takes over from Steve Carter. Mark Seabright now going up on the inside of Steve Carter as well so it is Wayne Broadhurst that gets away from Mark Seabright and puts it very square in the middle of that Up in second place, tries to hold it tight again. Keith Potts, a very good line round that pit bend. Up in the third place, right on the back wheel of Mark Seabright. I'm sure I've been watching the right side of Mark Seabright. Very much a strong one towards the speedway side of the side, and putting the bike sideways in the middle of the bend. That's the slowest down, and you get the wheel quickly in line for the That's where you can put the power to the ground. But Wayne Broadhurst. No answer to that style at the moment. Wayne Broadhurst going brilliantly well in front of Mark Seabright. Keith Potts still not being able to get past Mark Seabright. The brilliant ride this for Wayne Broadhurst. And let's not forget that Wayne Broadhurst did have a second place first time out. So I said this competition would be in the 350. It turned out to be just that. As it is, the Wayne Broadhurst did Keith Potts get that on the line. Well, that was exceptionally close. I was watching Wayne Broadhurst cross the line, and just as they come flying past me, Mark Seabright and Keith Potts were together, but the line judge is sitting next to me. I wait anxiously to see what that result's going to be. Well, a lot of the top point scorers together there in race 19 in the 350 competition. It was a win for Wayne Broadhurst. That's number 158. But who made the best of that second place? It was indeed number 175, Keith Potts. In third place, number 167, Mark Seabright. In fourth place, number 75, Steve Carter. Fifth place, number 121, Alan Harmer. Sixth place, number 332, Nick Irwin. Seventh place, number 71. Eighth place, 36. Ninth place, 77. And tenth place, 69. No other finishes. The winning time won 40.07, 51.32.
1.40.07 the time we turn our attention to race 20 we've seen a lot of the top point scorers but a man that was top of the tree was number 14 martin jacobs he had a win first time out so we watch to see how he goes in this one i can see that he's a long way back down the field together in race 19 so he knows he must be in with a very very strong chance of scoring in this one but if he wants to see what happens as they break he's up in the third but it's Dave Mears that leads at the moment from number 41 David Steen so David Steen finished third first time out he'll be looking to score one in this one Point for a fourth place first time out so he's looking to go well well we did say that this would be an interesting competition at 350s they're all starting to share the points now well, martin jacobs you remember how to win first time out oh, third place the comes around leading the field Will David Steen be able to catch him before he gets to that checkered flag? Martin Jacobs then, number 14, holding third place, had a win first time out. Mitchell Gordon is the leader of the pack of riders who are going to be forced downward. But we really keep our attention on that second and third place. Will he get through to second? David Steen doing everything he can to hold on to that second place. It's Mears that gets the 10 points. But David Steen hangs on to that second place and Martin Jacobs finishing in third. Mitchell Gordon, a good ride from him, finishing in fourth place. So he's certainly done his point scoring campaign no harm. But very interesting development in the 350 competition. I think that's going to be very close towards the end of the day. Race 20, it's event two, the 350 competition, the win for number 139, his first this afternoon, Davis in second place, number 41, and that of course is David Steen, in third place, number 14, Martin Jacobs, fourth place, number nine, Mitchell Godden, fifth place, number 261, Andy Gom, sixth place, number 26, and I don't think I'll attempt to finish that result because uh, somebody's going to have difficulty hearing it as the bikes come around fast. While they are collating the results together and then obviously we'll catch up with that one. But let's stay with the 500 competition that we've got out there at the moment. This is with the Continental Style 500 chairs as I like to call them. Top of this competition at the moment is Wayne Boys and Mel and Lester Goodwin. And who have we got out there at the moment? We've got Mel and Lester Goodwin. second place so these two on maximums at the moment oh, it would be a good one for Mel and Lester Goodwin to win as they lead coming past me Wayne boys with no answer to them at the moment both these outfits on that maximum 10 points from their first ride Seven points, I say. Well, Lionel Cox is the only other competitor still going I think all eyes have got to be on Mel and Lester Goodwin. They do really look to be in very good form this season. We wish them the very best of luck when they do represent us out on the continent. But certainly in terms of English competition, they seem to be the crew doing sport. They won their first ride and are doing very, very well to hold that second place at the moment. Very big gap between them and Lionel Cox back in third place. It's the checkered flag though for his second win of the afternoon. That's number 30, Mel and Lester Goodwin, followed home in second by number 91, Wayne Boys and Simon King. And I think we can do this one all together as we go across the line. Number 25 in third place, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. That's, I hadn't realised, of course, Lionel and Grace did uh, come to grief in their first ride, so it's good to see both of them out there competing again. Let's give you the result of race 20 then, because that one I tried to get through and didn't get a chance to. Winning race 20 was number 139. In second place was number 41. Third was number 14. Fourth was number 9. Fifth was 261. Sixth was 26. Seventh, 96. Eighth, 260. Ninth, 45. 10th, 99. No other finishes. The winning time, 
141.44 and the speed 50.53 50.53. So that's the result of race 20. The result of race 21, a win for Alfit number 30, Mal and Lester Goodwin. In second place number 91, Wayne Boys and Simon King. And third place number 25, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. The winning time 142.56 with a speed of 49.88. So hopefully you're all up to date now. The winning time there on race 21, 142.56. The rest of the build of the 500cc sidecar competition. That certainly looks to me to be the very distinctive Alan Peck who's leading at the moment. It is indeed Alan Peck that comes round past us, leading from number seven, Kevin Laird. So Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse in second place at the moment. But if you just start to be getting close to the Second, first time out, uh, Alan Peck and Lynn Peck. Kevin Laird was the one that needs to make up the points. He's only on three points at the moment from a fourth place. So he'll be anxious to score well in this one. For 21, Norman Haynes and Neil Pocknell in third place. I don't get close to the Not quite found a way to get round Alan and Lynn Peck though as they get close again coming into this pit bend. This really is starting to get very, very tight for first place. Alan Olympic driving hard, going wide. They'll see the last lap flag this time. Alan looks across his shoulder. He knows that Kevin Laird is there somewhere. He'll be looking for him to come through on the inside, but Kevin goes for a wide line coming into the bend. That should give him a nice Into the pit bend for the last time then. Alan Olympic holding off Kevin Laird. I say holding him off, but are they going to be able to do enough to get to the line? It looks as if they are. Good result for Alan Olympic. Kevin Laird finishing in second place. And Simon Baird finishing in third. It's 22 and a win for outfit number 20. That's Alan and Lynn Peck. In second place, number seven, that's Kevin Laird and Alan Pithouse. Third place, number 14, Simon Baird and, uh, still don't know that lady's name, uh, but it's R. Sanford. And in third place, number 21, uh, that's Norman Haynes and Neil Pocknell. The winning time, 144.81, the speed, 48.97. So that's the 500 chairs. They finished their second leg. We move on to the 500cc solo competition. And if we remember back, it was Paul Hurry and Trevor Banks that had a win first time out. So let's look to see if any of them go in this one. Well, Trevor Banks does. But Paul Hurry goes in race 24. So let's look who else we've got. We've got number 23, of course, is not John Trevitt. Oh, yes, it is John Trevitt. Number 23, Mike Trevitt. He's replaced by Neville Penfold. But as they go into that first corner, it's Trevor Banks that sets the pace once again. Mark Seabide has gone after him. I'm looking at him. Trevor Banks leading then as they come round off that pit bend. And before that is Trevor Banks. And it is Neville Tatum that holds second place. Robbie Fuller has moved up into third in front of Ricky Sanford. And I thought I would see a red flag there for uh, Paul and Ryder on that pit bend. Obviously, once again, in the interest of safety, the speed those riders are going, they did not know uh, they attempted to get all the bikes and riders back from South Africa. I think I'll leave that to your imagination. we go then with the rerun of race 23 remind you again this is the 500 cc class and ricky Stamford has made a brilliant start this time neville tatum has gone into the lead though as they go into that first bend ricky Stamford trying to go around the outside going well but Neville Tatum now looks to be in form. Neville of course had uh, a third place first time out so he'll be looking for maximum points this time. Ricky Sanford trying to stop him. Robbie Fuller is the rider up in fourth place at the moment but Trevor Banks who had maximum first time out. Now 
Great form. Ricky Sanford going well in second place. Trevor Banks, no answer to him at the moment. You might remember that Trevor had what looked to be such a comfortable win first time out. Ricky Sanford still there in second, uh, Trevor Lang still there in third, and I'm really pleased that I've just noticed that they can see Martin Trevor Banks in third, Roy Fuller in fourth, and Mark C. Wright, a very cagey ride in fifth place. Race 23 then, and a good win for Neville Tatum. It's right number 23 that goes in first place. In second place, 04, Ricky Sanford. In third is number four, Trevor Banks, but I think this is going to be a waste of time once again because we're already underway with race 24. Oh, well, I try and catch my breath. They indeed look to the start of race 24. That looks like Adrian Bowe. Looks like he's in third place at the moment. And not forgetting, of course, that Paul Hurry was the rider on maximum points coming into this second ride. Well, it is indeed Duncan Tolis that leads from Paul Hurry. Paul Mitchell's up there in third, Adrian Moa holding fourth at the moment, and Paul Hurry goes for the front. So Watch him come round that pit bend. Doesn't he look in good form this afternoon, Paul Hurry? Duncan Toller, still there in second, Paul Mitchell in third, Chris Tritton in fourth, he's got through in front of Adrian Moore, Alan Harmer is up there in sixth place. Incredible display, such an experienced rider, and what a way to come past us going into the last lap. Brilliant piece of riding from Paul Hurry. As those three come together in that pit bend, Paul Hurry in the air again, comes past us. Duncan Tolhurst in second place, Paul Mitchell in third and Chris Tritton in fourth. Adrian Moa manages to get in front of Alan Harmer for fifth place. In number 86, Paul Hurry. In second place, number 74, Duncan Tolhurst. In third place, number 29, Paul Mitchell. Fourth place, number three, Chris Tritton. Fifth place, number 154, Adrian Moa. Sixth place is 121. Seventh place is 45. Eighth place is 22. Ninth place is 16. Tenth place is 2. No other finishes. The speed is 52.84 and the time 136.48. I'll quickly go back to race 23 because I know I didn't complete the result of race 23. It was a win for number 23. In second, 04. Third, number 4. Fourth, 26. Fifth, 167. Sixth, 165. Seventh, 169. Eighth, 174. Ninth, 24. Tenth, 145. Eleventh, 19. And twelfth, 201. Speed was 53.91, the time 134.80. Well, my apologies, I hope you did manage to get all those results. I know, as I say, a lot of you do keep your own points and everything as you go through. So, uh, important to some people, I get all those results out. The query you might have on that result in Reese 23 was that Jason Jennett, we know, is in the programme as 167. He's riding a bike that's got 215 on it, So, but it is Jason Jennett on as we describe in the programme as 165, hence we've given that result. We move on to race 25, and we're back to the sidecar competition. Second leg of the right-hand sidecars, race 25 in your programme. Quickly looking through my list of results, and we've got Neville Penfold going in this one. He had a second first time out. Richard Jenner had a third first time out. Steve Heath. Oh, this is bad. Well, he must have had a, at least a fifth place 
Tim Bennett, of course, had a third place as well. Roger Mesa looking to improve at a second place first time out. And interestingly enough, number six, Peter Adams, who had a third place. The New Zealand three-way rider, number six, Peter Adams, who looked to be struggling with this track first time out. I did get a chance to speak to him this morning. He said he'd not seen a track quite like this before. I'm sorry to say that he thinks that all British grass track tracks are going to be like this for the rest of the season, but uh, I think he's got a little bit of a shock coming to him, don't you? Away we go then with the first of the second leg of the 1000cc sidecars. It looks as if Roger Musa has made a much, much better start this time as they go down that back straight. Looking to see who it is that makes up that second place. That looks very much to me like Richard Jenner's leathers that have shot through in the second place. Neville Penfold has come through on the inside though and got himself in the second. A good first corner from Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Peter Adams has not made the start this time but he drives in hard underneath Richard Jenner to try and make up some places and indeed spins on that bottom bend. Well he certainly managed to hang on to that very well indeed as he gets back into racing form. So, not getting to grips with our circuits at all at the moment, the New Zealand champion, but as we stay with the front of race 25, it is Roger Misa and Shane Lapp on the lead. From Neville Penfold and Paul Randall in second, Tim Bennett is up there in third place in front of Richard Jenner, and Steve Heath back in fifth place, with now Peter Adams breathing down his exhaust pipe. As we look to the front though, is this Roger Misa and Shane Lapham back in form? Last week at the Barks, they looked to be underpowered. They said that the motor sounded very, very soft indeed. They knew there must have been something a little bit wrong with it. Perhaps they found out what that was. And is this the form we're going to see from the now? Well, I must admit, while he's leading, I think I can tell you a very quick story. I asked him how fit he felt, because I'm sure a lot of you out there know that he was uh, injured badly last year. He said he's fitter now, because he's actually going for physiotherapy with young 16-year-olds. So he's a lot fitter than he ever was, and he looks to be in great form. That's a win for Roger Misa and Shane Vega. Shane Lapham, of course, I should say, as I see Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Across the line in front of Tim Bennett. Race 25, a win for outfit number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham in second place, number 12. No, what's that? Well, my apologies, I've jumped a place, haven't I? Number two, of course, in second. Number 12 in third. Number two, of course, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Number 12, of course, is Tim Bennett and passenger Pete Bassett in third place now is number 87 fourth, fourth place I should say 87 <laughs> I think I ought to start this one again really shouldn't I but <laughs> they suggested that I hand the mic over to the lap scorer now that might be a good idea actually 51 2 12 87 191 and 6 the winning time 128.53 and the speed 52.17 well, we got there in the end. <laughs> Race 26 then, we're with the right-hand side cars again. Quickly looking through this list of runners. And notably, at number 13, John Halsley. He had a win, first time out. Number 55, Jerry Adams had a third, first time out. Well, we're looking for those yellow letters of John Halsey as he goes down that bank straight, John Halsey and Tony Miles. Ivan Matthews comes through very, very quickly in second place. He, of course, is unfortunate to have that accident in his first ride. Didn't take place in the rerun, but he's now out in determined form as Kevin Simmons on outfit number 32 is up there in third place behind him. Kevin Simmons, of course, scored well first time out. He had a second first time out, Kevin Simmons. And he will be looking to capitalise on that. But we're right to the front as John Halsey and Tony Miles lead at the moment quite comfortably from Ivan Matthews. But Ivan Matthews is not the sort of rider to give up at all. He'll be fighting every inch of the way. Uh, and my lap scores have just corrected me because of course Darren is back in fifth place. As I say, it would help if I could count and talk at the same time. But John Halsey and Tony Miles, no question about them. As indeed the leading crew going very, very well this afternoon. Oliver Matthews and uh, Peter Jones, of course, passenger four this afternoon. Peter Jones, you may remember the name of, was passenger two, Paul Pinfold, last season. As we look to see the chequered flag go, and this is going to be the second chequered flag for John Halsey this afternoon, so he looks to be in very convincing form. Oliver Matthews finishes in second. Third? 
Simmons. Kevin Simmons, of course, maintaining that third place to the line. He's scoring well, and Jerry Adams finishing in fourth place. For outfit number 13, his second of the afternoon, that's John Halsey and Tony Miles. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Third place is number 32, Kevin Simmons and Mark Langmaid. Fourth place is number 55, that's Jerry Adams and Alan Cooper Smith. And in fifth place, number 28. Sixth place, 101. The speed is 50.52 and the time, 132.07. 13, 15, 32, 55, 28, 101, 50.52, 132.07.